Hello everyone, Gareth from Aslan 74 here again today. Welcome to a Valve Hammer tutorial. This time I'm going to demonstrate how to sort of create dropships today. Uh, thanks to a viewer. Now I know this is massively overdue, but let's just get right into the basics of it. Now there's going to be two examples that I'm going to show. One of which is a dropship that is just as a background object, which just flies from point A to point B doesn't interact with the player any, doesn't drop off any combine soldiers or anything like that. It just flies, goes to a point and then despawns. So in Air X01 for example, that's a good example to show a, a dropship that's not interacting with the player, it's just there as a background detail. And there's another situation where you might actually want the dropship to have say a, a crate and a crate has combine soldiers in it and so then you want it to go from point A to point B but this time at point B it unloads soldiers and then goes from point B to point C and then at point C it despawns. So I've got this set up here, a sort of empty looking exposed to the void kind of map. It's in Hammer++ so I just can do that and as you can see it's perfectly fine. And over here I've got a dropship and so if I just go alt enter quickly then all you really want to do is give it a name and also a target path track. So if I just turn around then the first path track is here and this path track has these properties I've called it something stock dropship p1 and then if you shift drag they it auto creates the next stop target. So in my case, because this is a really simple example, it's just going from point A to point B and at this path track, you can pretty much say on pass, drop ship and then kill. But this is for the other part of the tutorial, the, the outputs, so I'll get to that a little later. Um, and it's important to note as well for the first path track, what you want to add as an output is a drop ship flight a specific track via path and then the last path track on the path so in this case because it's only you know two path tracks it goes to uh, number two um, so that's that and that's what you want to do there so in this case the dropship is going to spawn over here somewhere it's going to fly over to this area drop off these four soldiers over here and then fly away along this other path track so again going back to the dropship that's just an overview um, so yeah, give it a name, give it a target path track and um, all of this stuff is for later. You can give it whatever you want in terms of crate type, whether you give it a jeep uh, like as seen at the end of the lighthouse point confrontation in Half-Life 2, uh, an APC, a strider, a roller hopper, like roller mines, a crate or nothing. So those are your options right there. And um, you can change the gun range as well, although I think in source mods the gun is actually bugged. So there's a Valve developer wiki article basically outlining how you can fix the gun functionality. It's just literally a download, copy and paste and compile job. So not really worth doing a Valve source code tutorial just telling you to do that now. Um, but in flags it's important to have fall to ground and template NPC that way it just doesn't spawn and activate immediately as the map begins and that leads me to this entity over here called a NPC template maker call it something like dropship spawner and then frequency you want it to be one max number of live NPCs you want it to be one and the target NPC template NPC is dropship and then to actually trigger that because we set start disabled to be yes I can go in over to where the player is and I've just got a stock button to spawn in the drop ship so that's all that's going to happen there so as soon as it spawns in it's going to go to path number one because that's what we said in the gunship so drop ship yeah if I say gunship I mean drop ship but yeah it just goes to path number one and then it will go to path number two so in the case of having a drop ship that has um, soldiers you want soldier crates you also want to define a land target name so I've used an info target and I've put that right here 
it actually needs to be facing in the direction of the dropship as it sort of lands so the crate is going to be sort of where the combine soldiers come out it's going to be near the front of it over here where my mouse is if you see it so it's going to go all the way over here and it's going to stop at this target point over here and um yeah i've just called it dropship land point so that's the land target over here and then there's four soldiers that i want to have spawn out of it that go to four different positions so they are all over here so they're just a bog standard npc combine s um all in a squad called combine squad that's something you can do just create a, uh, create a custom squad name uh, number of grenades is whatever you want it to be weapons is whatever you want it to be and importantly for all of these soldiers you want uh, fall to ground fade corpse and template npc so again they're not going to be visible and also the info targets for the drop off points that's where they're going to run to when they come out of the uh of the drop ship so I'll just put them equally spaced on this uh platform over here and i've also created an assault uh, four assault rally points all called rally points and they go to different assault assault points where you can change the delay on them as well so yeah rally points and then it goes to an assault assault point over here and then i think assault timeout you want it to be zero but leave every other setting as is and under flags just yeah tick clear this point upon arrival unconditionally and then there's also an ai goal assault called ai assault and because i've named my soldiers like soldier one soldier two soldier three to call upon all of them you can do soldier asterisk which is sort of like a wild card thing so it's basically going to find every word with soldier in it and then basically go through every number after so you know it's going to find soldier one two three four and it puts them all into this one single parameter here and then the rally point that we created is the rally point set and there's nothing more you really need to do there so that's just a basic overview of what to do and there's nodes as well because you know the combine soldiers need to be able to move so having some info nodes down uh, doesn't hurt any and so what we're going to do is under path number two when we pass it we want to say our dropship and you can either do land take crate or land leave crate um, if you do land take crate then the dropship takes the crate away with it and land land leave crate yeah that's the other one that drops the actual crate when all the soldiers are out so it's either land take crate or land leave crate and then it passes through a parameter in this case because i want four soldiers to come out i just set this number to four if you have three soldiers you set it to three six soldiers you set it to six and then also set the track to the return path and the reason why it's broken up into two is because well if we just say go to path three from here then it's just going to go to path three so you want to create two separate paths that way once it's done dropping off the soldiers it can go through path three and then through to path six where it eventually you know despawns because we tell it to kill itself basically um so with all that being said and done there's two more things i need to go over one of which is the drop ship there's two outputs on create shot down before drop off and on finished drop off both trigger a logic relay called dropship leave um, so unfinished drop off is, is if when all of the soldiers are out and deployed and on crate shot down before drop off is if the crate actually gets destroyed or shot down before the drop ship actually manages to land which is something you can do I didn't know you could do it but apparently it's you know a real thing and then in the logic relay um, I'm just going to say um, you know fly to specific track by path which is drop ship, drop ship P6 excuse me it's going to go through number three number four number five to get to number six where it despawns then we want to disable the gun on the crate and then 
activate the AI assault and then begin the assault after 0.1 and 0.2 seconds respectively. So I know I've not really done anything to place the entities down. It is one of those where I thought I'd mix it up and actually just sh talk about the process um, and fuck up with my words, obviously, because I do that all the damn time. And, um, you know, what is editing and all that good stuff. But, um, yeah, I've also got this block LOS brush around the player area. That way the gunship and the dropship, sorry, and the soldiers don't interact with the player. So it gives us a nice view of what happens. So if I was to save and compile this solution, then what you should see is that the dropship spawns when the button's pressed. It flies through the first path track, goes to path track number two, then begins to unload the soldiers. The soldiers come out of the uh, actual crate, the dropship crate. They go to their info target positions, and then the, the, like, the, like, the drop off positions. And then once all of the soldiers are out, they make their assault, they make their move, and then the dropship flies away until it reaches its final path and despawns. So I hope this is satisfactory, at least. Let's just put it that way. But um, if you need any help, all of this tutorial is based off of. Um, D2 Coast 10 from Half-Life 2. You can use something like vMix to decompile the map or looking to get in the Half-Life 2 Xbox 360 unmodified .vmf files, which is what's going on here. And I can actually, you know, show off the map, I guess. But um, yeah, you see all the drop ships, you see all the path tracks, you see all the uh, info targets, and you see everything like nodes and node hints which is not something that I've gone over. Um, but yeah, that, this is more of a, like a complicated wave style, like horde mode version of the uh, combine soldier drop off via dropship. And so you can use this as an example. You can use what I've done as an example, try and follow along. It's really not that difficult. Um, you just gotta know, you know, you gotta create your soldiers, Right, set them to be templates, then have your rally points, you know, an assault rally point, and all give them the same name, create info targets that relates to the positions where the soldiers are going to go to, and then assault assault points, which are all, you know, named something different, but they have an assault timeout of zero, and then clear, you know, have the clear flag checked. Um, Maybe you need to get the wild card correct. So in my case, I've just called them soldier 1234. So you can use soldier asterisk there. And then in either land, take crate, either in land, take crate or land, leave crate, then you pass through the right parameter, which is exactly the same number of soldiers that you want to come out of the crate. So I hope you found this helpful and um, you know, placement wise, it is entirely up to you. I've you only done this as an example to highlight what it is that you need to do. Functionality wise, placement wise, it's, you know, all, all down to you how you decide to do it. So I'm going to end off the video here, everyone. I've gone on for long enough, I think. I hope you found the video helpful. Please let me know what you think as I crack my knuckles. And um, yeah, I'll see if what I decide to do next. And if you have any suggestions or anything you want me to cover then please let me know in the comment section down below and if you like this style or not but yeah thanks and take care out there